Motion to extend minutes. Everything but the 17. Second. Yep. Everything but the 17? Correct. Yep. Okay, we're good on those? All right with me. Okay. Uh, First up is Fred Barron. Fred Barron. On the complete streets policy. Complete streets policy. Okay. Right here. Hey, how are you? Good. Uh, if I stand or just. No, wait, you're fine. I'm fine. Okay. Uh, I don't know what the board knows about the complete streets initiative by the state. It's funding that's available to municipalities for, essentially for, well, I, I'll read you their definition. A complete street is one that provides safe and accessible options for all travel modes, including walking, biking, transit, and motor vehicles, and for people of all ages and abilities. Complete streets and improvements may be a large scale redesign or a small scale improvement that is focused on one mode. So essentially it's to integrate or facilitate moving around. Now, in many other communities will involve mass transit and uh, whether it's bus routes or rail or whatever. Uh, Judy Marklin and I from the planning board met with Keith Bardwell and we pretty well decided, you know, thought that really the center of town was the only place where this is really going to apply, at least initially. There are three phases involved, like three tiers in this process. Tier one is development of a policy uh, with four requirements, attending a training session, which Keith Bardwell has done, develop a complete streets policy, which you have, should have copies in front of you, uh, adopt the policy by a chief elected office, official or board in one public meeting, that is today, and submit policy to MassDOT for scoring. The policy which Keith and Judy and I have developed is essentially one that was developed by Colerain when they submitted their policy. They had a score, I think, of 95 on this policy and with some very minor changes We've just essentially cut and pasted Waitley for Colerain and we'll intend to submit that as a policy. It's a, this is a very general policy. It's not specific proposals. Uh, that comes in subsequent tiers. The second tier is developing a prioritization plan and then tier three is, is submitting approval, uh, submitting specific projects for approval. So phase one is just developing a general policy statement of objectives for the town in what they would like to see done in a very broad sense. Uh, and if you read that, you'll see there are no specifics about any given street or preference of any mode of transportation or anything else. It's just a desire to facilitate all of these. And what is needed at this point is select board approval of this policy with whatever changes you may want to make because we are also gave you a copy of the schedule and we are running late tier one rolling policy review and scoring was scheduled for February to early June of 2016 for this cycle so this would need to be approved and moved on to MassDOT uh, as quickly as possible. Um, I've also given you the, those blue things are a general sort of overview of the whole program. You can go through it at your convenience later. Uh, Fred, is there a, with the implementation of possible projects, yes. is this is there a match required, or is this full state funding? It is full state funding. Uh, they will, in tier two, which is setting prioritization plan, they say that up to, up to $50,000 for technical assistance can be provided. And then in phase in tier three, it's up to $400,000, but uh, I believe I've never seen someplace that architectural or engineering fees are not included. This would be for 
you know, con concrete and... Right, so for example, that. we all know that the sidewalks up and right. down Chestnut Plain Road <clears throat> are rough at best. And that's going to require some level of rudimentary engineering. Right. Um, a, a, an assessment of what happens to the trees when you're breaking up roots, probably, you know, on, on and on. So, and, and then actual plan design. So, and I'm not opposed, I'm just saying that yeah. we all need to have on the table that if we do the, 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 this program, mm -hmm. it's not going to be a freebie for the town, but it's, we will it's have to It's not a complete freebie, but there a lot of what we want to be done is covered. Now, some of this can also coordinate with the work that's being done by the Conway School for the downtown yeah. redevelopment. So we can, as a coordinate through that, and that will be a lot of, or a fair amount of the planning that will go, because they're looking at sidewalks and the streets and parking and all those things right. that would be involved with this. Uh, so I think that the, those two initiatives going side by side would work, they would work very well together, looking at probably the same areas, though again, you know, if there are other spots in town that might have needs, that would be one thing, uh, you know, for you to look at. But this is on another sheet, they say there are examples of eligible infrastructure projects, street lighting, traffic calming measures, intersection improvements, curbing, etc. So essentially anything that's involved in uh, rehabilitating streets or making them uh, multimodal or more accessible can be covered fairly easily. Well, uh, I don't know enough about the program to say much about it except, like Jonathan, I'm concerned about the economic uh, implications for the town. And you mentioned that the center of town. I take it by that you're defining the center of town as being the intersection the, the, of Haydenville and the historic the, district. The historic Along district. Okay. Chestnut and that, Plain, that, Haydenville, and extending. That would be the whatever. first site for application of. Well, again, we, you, we don't have to designate anything at this point. At this point, tier one, we're simply talking about this general statement of adopting uh, the complete streets policy. Uh, and, it does, and submitting this does not oblige you in any way to apply for anything in the future. If you decide to drop it, 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 develop, it never goes any further. If we develop projects and all, we're competing with other towns, so there must be a point system. Which is there's, there's a point system for scoring the policy. It's on a basis of 100. You need 80 or more to pass, as I said. We have largely used an application that got a 95. So the likelihood is, unless they're changing their scoring system, that it should not be a problem. And we also saw that using another a previous application is something that's been done in other instances too. Well, but having an application accepted yeah. is, is one thing, but if there is five dollars to spend mm -hmm. and each project is a dollar right. and there are ten towns that submit a, a, a strong application mm -hmm. you're still only going to get five grants well, I, out of the state to simplify I, I, the dollars I, I, not, not having been through the process I don't know when you get to tier three which is allocation of specific funds for specific projects where whether it's competition or you know you submit a project and they will say yes or no at that point you know to to their funding right as opposed to partial funding for a project I, it, from what I can understand of this and I haven't had it all that long either is that you submit tier one policy tier two priorities tier three specific projects and when you submit the specific projects, they will approve, disapprove funding of those projects, not 40% or 30% or right. whatever. 
I, I guess it just it, it, it comes down to again if there are more mm -hmm. projects applied for than funds available, does it come down to shovel ready? You know, do we I, have to I, expand I, I, I don't engineering know. funds? I, I know that they have set up something in the funding stream that is giving priority to smaller towns. Yeah. That I think they set aside not set aside but decided that at least a third of the funds will be going to small towns. Uh, and again, not having been through the process, I don't know once you get to that stage how it all plays out. Who, who drafts our policy? Or are we going to go with the one that's already? Well, I, I submitted this, this is a draft that that's a draft. for you to edit or approve, though I, you know, with the schedule as it is. Uh, it's pretty much boilerplate. So you and Judy and Keith yeah. have taken the re on the responsibility by yourselves to draft the. To draft right. I, I don't. I don't know. I, I don't know how it came to Judy. Judy came to me. I don't know how it got to Judy. Okay. And uh, Keith must have heard about it. I guess from. Mark, because there's a, a letter here saying received March 16th, uh, March 14th, so he must have okay. moved it along. Okay. Uh, I didn't know if we had to appoint members of a committee or anything like that. So. I think yeah. Mark and Keith yeah. both went to this. Yeah, I, I hadn't talked to Mark, but I know that Keith did. Right. So it strikes me that, I mean, part of me wishes that we had a functioning open space committee right now because this might been quite nice under their purview, and, under their purview mm -hmm. and actually do some of the legwork but we haven't had an open space committee in a number of years now um Probably so Judy's on. no I, I, it, was, it was it was it was me and mary shanley i mean that tells you how many you know it was a while back gone for a while. Okay. so um i guess our homework you guys is to look at this and to see if it's something that A, we support, and B, what red line edits we can forward well, to. You're not meeting until June 13th, so is it okay if it's approved I, on June 13th? I, I don't know. All I know is what the schedule says. <coughs> it's it's February to early June. Early June. Early Have you read this? I have skimmed through it. I mean, it, it, it it's pretty much a boilerplate. It, it's a very generic it, statement. You're not, it's not committing to anything. So, aside from not wanting people to get hurt on the roads. Dare, dare, I, dare I ask? You're asking us to approve this tonight, and we've just seen it now. I am only. I mean, we, 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 that's we, the case. Yeah, yeah, that, that, yes, it's the case. And my uh, statement to you is that, you know, look through it quickly, but if you look through it, you see you're not committing to anything. <laughs> There's absolutely nothing. How about this? To potentially I, I, I don't want to break any laws. <laughs> I, li I like the policy. I, I do too. I'm just wondering, can we pass this with the tonight with the with the qualification that any small edits based upon any small edits that are made within the next 48 hours is that allowed? Yeah, I would feel better probably if could you are meeting on Friday morning, you could take it up in between interviews okay. on Friday morning. It's, it, if they approve it June 3rd, I, which is Friday. Again, all I know is early June. Okay. I don't know what that means. Okay. It's the state. That means early September. Mm -hmm. um, do you do yes, let's do that. Anything? Okay. But I guess I'd like to see what, again, how this relates to the Conway School of Design study in the center of town. I mean, yeah, you say they're coordinating, but I guess, what does that mean? It, it means that they're, they actually went to the presentation at the Conway School by the students who were doing it last week. And they have a, not a proposal, but sort of a study of the uh, historic district 
with some recommendations, but not, you know, certainly di different avenues to go through. And all I'm saying is to look at their recommendations or thoughts and try to integrate that or use those to, to, to try to, you know, give us some ideas as what we might use in this application. But once again, as far as tonight or into <clears throat> Friday goes, you're committing to nothing. Because there's no application, there's no money, there's no right. yeah. anything at this point. I, I get that. I just yeah. that I've been no, doing, I'm, I've been doing this for a dozen years, and I, I've never voted on something that I hadn't looked at before. Yeah. Call me crazy. crazy. I did, oh yeah, I, I came. I didn't know if Mark had given you a copy of this. I yet. Or I have. First I have. Okay. I, okay. Because okay. I know Mark. Let's has many other things. That can you do homework on? and then be ready on Friday to sure. thumbs up or thumbs down? Yes, that'd what? be fine. My, my only question is, it says, is the town of Waitley has a distinct village center and many rural and country roads. Um, all projects will be evaluated in keeping with the community or nature of the town, uh, of the area in town, of the proposed project or improvement. So that sounds like all of Waitley well, is covered. This covers, all, this covers all of Waitley. When you get into setting priorities, that's when you start narrowing. Okay. And we're going to have to set up right. some form of a committee sure. to evaluate these Absolutely. and say Absolutely. Christian Lane versus I don't yeah. care what. So no matter, Absolutely. No matter what we do, we will not be held accountable for any financial or legal. Yeah, you are committing to no finances. All you're doing or legal. in this tier one is submitting a policy. Or legal. Encumbrances uh, there too. So, right. And okay. you know, at, at that point, Will, I assume if the policy gets approved, they will look, then come back and say, okay, here are the next steps that you have to undertake. But okay. now, this is the only step that can be taken. Uh, I don't know. What, it's good to have a policy, but I don't know. What are we addressing? What's the problem? What, what are we going to, what are we going to, it may be too early to, to, to get, what are we going to get as an outcome from this, but. Fred, it's, I, th I think it's like, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but I think it's, it's like, when you ask that question, it's like, well, why go to the doctor for a physical if you don't feel sick? Well, it may be that by going to the doctor and getting a physical, you find something you didn't know was wrong, and then you do something about it. So am I not... Well, yeah, it, it's to achieve a goal of... Is it, integrating transportation and not having uh, you know building roads that are unsafe for wheelchairs or building wheelchair ramps that are then unwalkable and just to try to make your infrastructure your transportation infrastructure as widely usable and friendly as possible and, and right now it's not I mean, that's, that's, that. If, if you're looking for, in my opinion, if you're looking for a, a challenge that we have in town, our roads and sidewalks are absolutely not accessible to the handicapped or frail elderly because of the roots and the disaster of our sidewalks. You know, Christian Lane doesn't have sidewalks, and I'm not saying that it needs sidewalks, mm -hmm. but it's... You know, I think about, I think about, since we have the schools represented here, the the kids in West Waitley, that maybe we could do something to make riding their bikes to school, a little bit to the elementary school, a little bit more palatable than currently exists. I don't know, but maybe. And clearly, this is a problem that the state legislature saw throughout the state. You know, this isn't a Waitley right. problem. This is everywhere that there are places that are not set up for whether it's bicycles or pedestrians or whatever and they're trying to make it okay. places yeah. as, as friendly yeah. as possible. I think there's a, a lot we can do even though of course we're a small low densely right. populated town so you know but I just came back from Europe of mm -hmm. Berlin particularly I was shocked how many people were on bicycles interacting with traffic in a very calm way I had you know it was it was very different from any town in this country I've ever been, and I think a lot of other European towns are way ahead of us also. In Amsterdam last year, it was the same, same thing. It's essentially a bicycle town now. Right. Okay. Well, 
a lot of what I, I see is, you know, types of projects here and activities would be more appropriate for cities mm -hmm. and larger communities. And I would, I, reading about in a newspaper about this, I think this was really set up for cities and towns, you know, larger size, and somebody objected to, what about the rural areas? How can we fit in? Mm -hmm. So the state said, okay, we'll give you some money for right. the rural areas. So you've got a token amount of money in the rural areas and you've got 85 communities all spending time submitting proposals and going through all this process for a minimal amount of money. Is that, I, I, I guess, I, I don't know, is that worth our I, time and effort to even do this, I mean? I think it's certainly worth it to go this, this phase, whether in getting into the setting priority stage, we can do more research into the, you know, what the program has done to this point, and then you make decisions as you go along whether it's worth the time and effort. And how much money are they saying they're making available? Do they, they even say what's? Uh, Twelve and a half million dollars over the net, over fiscal years 2016 and 17. For That's the whole state. For the whole state. Right. What's the what's the breakdown of rural urban? Is there any? Um, or cities, towns? supposed to be a third for rural areas. And I think, and this, you know, while we can fund some larger projects, I think the intention is to fund small projects that a town might un not undertake on its own. Well, I think it's great if we have yeah. people that are willing to develop tier one right. yeah. to go see what they come up with. And I, I can think of two things I'm not sure would qualify, like Strip Road and Weber Road intersect with Haydenville Road as a bleak or acute angles, depending on which road you're in and how you look yes. at it. Uh, both of which are very dangerous uh, intersections. Well, and well, one of the things that's eligible in infrastructure projects is intersection improvements. Okay. So, so that's good. Corner of Swamp and, and, and North Street. Okay. I mean, yeah. that's, that's an accident. That's several accidents waiting to happen. So, so both of these are major projects. No, I, I, I wish I could answer all your questions about the program. I can't. What I know about it at this point is. Leverage. You can't, okay. you can't go any further the until the select board study and yeah. approves this. And then and I, I think it's going to require the resurrection of our open space committee because we need some committee to prioritize any projects down the road. But let's do our homework. It, you know, it, if people don't want to do it on Friday, they don't do it on Friday, but let's at least go through it and have a, 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 a very intelligent three-minute conversation on Friday. If I'm not on jury duty Friday, I will be delighted to critique, critique okay. in that. And you said this came from the Conway did one? Colerain? Colerain. Colerain. Okay. Is, is this their exact one? With, with um, we made a couple of very small changes of like putting in um, phrase farm equipment or something. I mean, there are a couple of very minor. There are a lot of towns in the area that have adopted this. So yes. We're not exactly early adopters. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Let's um. We'll, do you have anything else, Fred? No. We're good. That's it. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our august superintendent is in attendance tonight. Good evening. How are you? Fine. How are Thanks. you? I'm fine. Um, thank you for allowing us to speak to you. I wanted first to introduce members of the Frontier School Committee. So I have Bill Panter from Conway okay. and Bob Decker from Deerfield, and we all know the illustrious Bob Hall. So, um, what we want to do tonight is just have a first preliminary conversation with you. We received permission from the entire Frontier School Committee back in May uh, to form a committee. Here is our committee. <clears throat> we have now met three times. Um, the purpose of uh, forming the committee was to explore three options. Um, as you probably have read in the paper, we have had some issues regarding our building in central office down the road. Um, nothing of an emergency situation, but some areas that need attention based on the reports that we had gotten from an independent uh, contractor, and then we had the Department of Public Health here as well. So there are some renovation costs that are, are part of that if, if we were to do that. The other option was to look at other spaces outside, this being one of them. 
And the other option um, was to explore moving our entire office up to the high school. So that was the charge of the committee back in May. Back sometime in late fall, I started having conversations with Mark Perhensky, your former town manager, about potential available spaces. And this came up in conversation as one of them. Um, and at the time, there were uh, conversations about South County Ambulance, and so there's been some, um, I don't say delay, but decisions haven't been made. And so what I'm here tonight is to say we would be very interested in renting um, some space from you. I have a draft proposal. It is purposely vague. Um, and I can pass these out to you. It talks about um, the space that we would like. Um, I don't mention too much about cost because, again, I think that's further down the road. Oh, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> that we would like to, if we were to pursue this and you were amenable to it, um, we would like to do a five-year lease up with an option to renew twice. Um, that would be subject to cost of living increases. Um, so I think we would be a good neighbor. Um, and I know you have some decisions to make, too. If it is not something that you wish to continue to explore with us, then that is information we need to bring back to our committee and say we need to look at some different options. And I probably have forgotten things, gentlemen. So if you want to jump in with anything, well, although although we don't, we're not really here to nail down dollar amounts. We would like to have a discussion with you about how dollar amounts should be calculated. I guess, um, and and basically, I mean, you may remember uh, from last year's town meeting, the the four towns we all took part, we all paid part of a fifty thousand dollar study from that's going to be coming out in UMass. The whole scope of that study is about shared services and going forward to reduce costs for everybody concerned to share services amongst the four towns. Part and parcel of that is that services to be shared on a cost basis or a nonprofit basis. And so one of the things that we, um, going for, you know, that the lease should be based on what your actual cost is. And, I mean, there, because there are terms like return of investment that we hear and whether or not, the, you know, what exactly the town is looking for and whether the town feels that they are entitled to a profit, um, whether the town feels that they should seek a profit. I mean, I don't know this, but this is what I'd like to talk about. Um, whether the town feels that they should seek a profit for, from the school um, or whether the town is to, willing to commit to actual cost um, as, as the precedent going forward for, for all the towns to provide services to each other and just and also because we're you you're us we are frontier you're it's the left hand profiting from the right hand just doesn't quite sound well just as a starter you, you have to remember that you guys approached us yeah. we're not looking for a revenue stream necessarily um, so we need to make sure that the cards are facing up on the table. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I'm prepared to talk about costs. I mean, we, we all want to keep our costs low, um, but there are always opportunity costs that need to be weighed in terms of what else could happen in the space, in whatever space is discussed. And I'm, I'm not saying opportunity cost has a financial cost, but it, it's, it's still a cost. I, I guess my... Are you looking to fill the space? Can I stop you for a second? I, I don't have an answer for you, Mark. Okay. All right. I, know, I, I know that... I'll, I'll speak for myself. My priority on the back side mm -hmm. of this building is SCEMS, and that is purely from a public service, mm -hmm. uh, public safety perspective. And you're We're, talking about the garage space and... And then X square footage beyond the, the garage bay because and and again how we fare in the rfp response process 
will will dictate a lot of this. But in my opinion, and it is both subjective and objective all at the same time, mm -hmm. it is easily the best location from a public safety perspective to house the South County Ambulance. That being said, um, if it did not go in there ultimately, would we be looking to fill that space? Pro absolutely probable, okay? But again, my personal opinion mm -hmm. is that I want to see the scams process play out, which is something we've discussed for far too long a period of time, but that, again, from a purely public safety perspective. But I need a question answered first. What is the, I mean, there, there would be a cost, there would be some cost to lease in this space. How does that compare to the cost that you guys must have at least nosed into about renovating the current space? It depends. Um, what we looked at was our current monthly expenses just for keeping the building open, no renovation costs. Um, based upon some figures that I've heard quoted in the newspaper, you know, for lease agreements with scams, if we were to be somewhere in that ballpark, it would be trading apples to apples. However, really, is that expensive to maintain? Yeah. Yes. Twenty-seven thousand plus or minus the last two years. This year is a little bit less because of fuel costs. And we don't have the full year. Forgive me if I choke. So, it is not. Show you the list. Yeah, it's not efficient because it's a very old boiler, etc. So there are things that the school committee has to make a decision on. We have an aging boiler that could go tomorrow. It could go. February 2nd, when it's 20 degrees below. And removal of that, replacing of that, and asbestos abatement is considerably expensive. So there's that piece. The asbestos wasn't removed back when the renovations were done that we finished paying. Oftentimes it's not removed. Yeah. It didn't have to do it, the old boiler was still there, but six figures when you're talking just a boiler and stuff down there. Right, right. I, I guess I guess I guess the biggest thing is that, that I'm kind of worried about stuff and what Phil brought up about cost you know if stems does come in and take over the garage area and X amount of square feet and we possibly could be right next to neighbor I think we should be charged the same amount as stem is going to be plain and simple if stem is going to be charged a dollar square foot I think we should be charged a dollar square foot Oh, I don't think you get any argument. You I mean, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, throw, I'm just throwing that out at, because, you know, God forbid, since we're four towns and they're three towns, you know, with stems, so, you know, it's, but there again, we're, we are family, but it just seems like this stems thing has gone on so long, and I know your point of view, trust me, I know that, but you know, this has been going on, you know, we got 120 days now, we have to wait. We're talking October. By the time the anything, any, any, that's not locked in stone. Though. Yeah, but that's anything could happen. Like they could never come in. And renovations probably 2017 spring, summer. Um, I mean, I'm just throwing that out there. I mean, it's a long time where you guys could have had somebody possibly if we came out some a couple months ago. Just to put this in the total perspective, we asked our prime tenant who's going to pay us 45000 a year to leave. So just put that in perspective. They were going to pay us $15 a square foot and we asked them to leave. Who was that? Just the library system. Oh, okay. They're now leased in Northampton. Okay. Yeah. We haven't come up really with a, with a final square footage or, or total cost, even for skims, I guess. We're still dealing with that, so we really can't answer your question and say, what is in there? Is it just basic operating costs or is there some factor in there for future expenses and remodeling? We don't know yet that. And, we and can't, I we can't that. tell you that. The other thing is this board has not decided whether who we're going to rent that space to. We have not taken any action. That's Jonathan's personal view that, and he said that, that he wants skims there. We, this board has not formally taken an action to put skims there, to put the school there, or to put both there. Though, well, though we are responding to an RFP. Well, yes, we are responding I mean, to an RFP for skims, but we have not addressed the issue of one or two agencies being there. Responding to an RFP does not commit us 
to you know, entering into a formal contract. Frankly, I'm fed up with the whole process. And I would like to see somebody in there. ASAP, every day we're losing money by not having anybody there. Now we can talk about the revenue stream. We're not in it to make money. We're in it to pay our costs and do so in a fair, equitable manner to all occupants, whether it's SCEMS or you guys. And frankly, um, I spent the better part of an hour today watching the Prudential Committee meeting that happened on May 15th, I believe it was. 12th. Okay. And uh, I was shocked by what I saw there. And from what I saw there, they're not serious about moving in here. So, but the Prudential Committee doesn't run the town. I know, it doesn't run the town. But there were a lot of people at that meeting who weren't on the committee saying things like, you know, uh, we're being jerked. Anyway, I, I don't want to get into those weeds. Suffice it to say, I left watching that, that little clip feeling like we're not being, we're not being seen uh, here uh, fairly by, by uh, some people in Deerfield who want to, uh, you know, make this impossible and keep delaying it for whatever reason. Well, I think it's mainly they want control. Some people want control. And I'm tired of the politics here. If you guys are willing to, you know, we can make a, an agreement or a proposal, you know, I'm, I'm much more inclined than Jonathan, and I don't know about Fred, but to go forward with you all. And, well, I, and I say that in, in hopes that maybe Skims or Boo will hear us other people say right you Paul, know can I can I jump in just at, and I know this is going to get back to the the, the, the people in Deerfield who, who, who want to see the scam stay and I'm, I'm sure of it and it's going to happen about five minutes after this meeting's over that's right but this conversation is precisely what they are hoping happens that's why they have delayed, because they have no facts behind them. They simply have delaying tactics behind them. And this conversation is exactly, I'm sure they huddled in their little groups to discuss this. They, maybe they did. And, and this is exactly how, what, I, what they were I, I, I've always been committed to scams. I want to see them in here. I believe the reports that we saw saying, Waitley, this location is the best for all three towns. Now, one individual who's rather well known in some circles, said very blatantly and loudly, actually, if it's over here, it's four minutes longer response time. Now, I don't know where he gets his information, but that's the kind of information that's out there that sways people that vote at town meetings, as was illustrated at their special town meeting. Mm -hmm. And if we're up against that kind of stuff, you know, we're not. Yeah, but, but, but Our proposal, though, allowed for both. Yeah. I mean, we looked at design. Well, that would be. Possibly, right. though, Possibly. though we, we went into this mm -hmm. under the when we came into this building, looking at that space as a place to house our town meetings and large and large non-town. You know, the, the, that was our central meeting area for town meeting. So we didn't continue to beat up with Great Elementary School's gym, which it wasn't designed for originally. Jonathan, can I just throw in, there's no way, we, you've had over 100 people the past two annual town meetings and there's no way you would get that well, many that's just not. that's just not true, then it wouldn't have fit in the, okay, I, I just that, I just don't believe that's true. That you've had over 100 people? No, that it wouldn't fit in there. But, but that's, uh, that's here or there, I guess. Uh, and I, I think I, we can't. I think we, we both can be in there. I talked to Bobby or her. So why can't we both be there? There's enough of space, and I'll speak to what Bobby told me. Well, can you submit us a, a more, say, definitive proposal than what See, you the, have here? The thing about that is that for us, one of the things that we were looking for is for you guys to say first, yes, we want you, because we, uh, we, it is, we have to, uh, before we can do anything, we have to know how much it's going to cost us. We don't have and, the authority. And that this, this is where it's way bigger than just the renting. It's all the other ancillary, co ancillary costs associated with it. What do we have to do to the building to sell, uh, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. All these other questions that for us to actually find the answer, like how much will this cost, is a huge expense and effort in and of itself. When we, when we put the scams, budget together in terms of what we were going to charge them. We did a, a very granular look at all of our costs. 
And that's how we came up with, with the money in terms of apportionment, in terms of the amount of space that SCAMS was going to use in, in a ratio with the entire building. So we can do a similar analysis to say, okay, what's the square footage and, and, and implement the, the exact same criteria that we used for SCAMS, we would use for you guys. And that's the, that's the only way to come up with a, with a dollar figure because we, wanna, we would need to see what's the square footage and, and, and what's that what's that proportion? Bob? I guess one other thing we're talking about, since it's it's kind of ridiculous for us to take out a small bond which costs a lot of money, if the town of Waitley already has a bond on it, whatever the cost for the renovations, you know, the these 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 petitions, all that stuff, I mean that would be our part of our monthly bill to you until we paid it off yeah I mean that's but that's what we need to when we you know luckily John has done some designing for us already to give us an idea you know maybe with some minor change but give us an idea where we need to put some walls you know office space you know pay foot petitions those type of things to give us an idea of how many square feet of petitions and how many doors we would need and stuff like that so John's done some preliminary stuff on there so between the cost of whatever the bond would be at you know paying our monthly rent plus the portion that we would do over the five years on you know on the first five years or whatever to pay it off I mean that's what we're trying to find out from you guys yeah John. I think you know it's pretty preliminary to try to even discuss numbers until we respond to that RFP the RFP gets opened up on Friday and see where things are from there. I mean, we don't know. Maybe there's some place out there that is going to meet their criteria to the T, and they make a decision within 20 days. Then we have a clearer path. Right. But, you know, I think there is space there as long as each entity, school and SCEMS, can maybe give a little bit on their ideal situation and to make things work. Well, There's other options out there that were brought up at that we Prudential did do Committee, a survey too. of all of our, yeah. our um, staff to find out um, what they currently have, what they desire, what do they actually need. And based upon that square footage, um, I asked yeah. John and to come up with cubicles on that. And it was just under 3,000 square feet. What's your well, name, John? If you take, if, if, let's take, so let's say, take a couple square hundred feet away from scams. What, what do you got? Well, if you think back, the initial plan that we kind of did with scams, we took part of the loading dock. Well, actually, we took the whole loading dock yeah. back then and used it for some of their storage, office, entry, so forth. Um, if we took half of that loading dock and kept um, roughly 1,200 square feet within this side of that cement block wall and the entire garage, they would still have roughly 1,500 square feet of office area where our original thing, or the last kind of draft was 1,540. So it's not that far off. That's what I mean. If we can balance a couple little things here and there, I think it could work. So if it's possible to get both Skins and Frontier in this building, I would be delighted. Um, and I would like for us to see as soon as possible. Obviously, time is of the essence because if you guys don't get what you need and the school year starts, then we're talking. Well, I mean, we're going to have to make some financial decisions sure. whether or not, you know, how much renovation, how much work is going to go into the current office space. Yeah. Um, you know, we have over 5,000 square feet there. It's not great space, but people have a lot of space. And so, what we are trying to do is really, and you know, if you have a big house, you fill all the closets. And so there's a lot of stuff over there. I am not feeling um, an emergency urgency, but I would like to be thoughtful, and summer is a good time to start planning for that kind of thing. Well, I, I, my two concerns are, one, public safety is probably my main concern. And if having skims over here is in our best interest for all three towns from a public safety standpoint, that's got to be my priority. And then second of all is, as a select board member from Wakely, uh, are the economic implications to our residents, our taxpayers. And I think getting this building occupied is of 
uh, utmost importance in that respect. So it seems to me that uh, you know I, I would prefer to have Skins here, but I would also love to have you both here if we can accommodate the needs of both parties. I think that's the best way to go. We, we think it can. Um, what I would like, my next meeting with the school committee, the Frontier Committee, is June 14th. So at that point, we have to report something back to them, and that's our last meeting of the that's year. That's Marty's last meeting, period. It's my last meeting. So, well, actually, I have Sunderland on the 21st. But could I at least say that you are interested in exploring it further, that you haven't said? Absolutely. Okay. You're okay with that? On, the, on June 30th, whatever you want to call it, will that tell you what they're looking for for square footage? Stems? Well, I'm the RFP. I'm hoping the RFP we submitted. Yeah, no, they said what they're looking for. Yeah, the RFP is right 3,000 square feet, including the garage. So we've got that covered. Yeah, so good. right now, the okay. plan that we've been working on gives right. them like right. 30. So we can do this right. and still be within the parameters of the RFP. I think so. Yeah. Right. Okay. Give or take a couple of feet. Right. Yeah. yeah. And we were and we've been playing with that couple feet on different wall, you know, on a wall or two to make our office space for the mostly women there, get the right, you know, they want this, Not but all these cabinets, but you know, we also think that they can have this and the cabinets can be right outside the door on a, on a, on a wall. My kids want a TV in the room. They're not going to get it. So well, I, I got what I give you. <laughs> but as far as the, 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 the bond, uh, you know, we've got money to finish our addition here and putting up a, a permanent wall to separate. Money was approved at our last town meeting to do that, and it was our intent to do that this coming year. Uh, so to fund your your portion of it, assuming that we agree that you're coming here, uh, I, I guess would be a separate bond or, or a separate funding source from, from the school. Is that is that something that's We don't possible? have a lot of money to you know, and, to and all, into. all four towns would have to agree to that as well. Oh, the regional school committee. Just the school, just the school just, committee. Yeah, the yeah, Frontier okay. Regional Committee owns it. Okay. Not we, we all four forward. towns have to vote in favor of the budget containing it. Right, right. but if we already got money <coughs> and, and if your plan is to move in and say within the next several months, where is your money going to come from for your moving? We for the moving? We're going to save the money on our or oh, you're, no. remodeling, yeah. you're remodeling or, or we have to look at the offices. we have to look issues. at the wording the wording of it but back in 2004 for a period of six years five years sixty thousand dollars was committed for renovation of that building and there remains about forty thousand in that um, so that was you know if if we can look at the wording of how that can be spent. That was initially what we were thinking of for moving costs. Um, I think our principle would be to build to suit, but to have the client or the tenant carry the cost of that modification. I mean, we can't subsidize it. The town of Waitley can't subsidize we can, it. We can float a bond. Yeah, but if you guys did the right. bond, we could pay, we could pay in the monthly and 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 the, and the lease would e the way we, the way it works with scams the lease equals the term right. of, of of payback if it's a five year if it's a five year or whatever, whatever, it, is. Or whatever it is right but would that happen within the next three months well four months Bob? we have in the past three years twenty six thousand seven eleven twenty seven five twenty for costs in two fourteen and two fifteen okay. 2014 or whatever. So we're roughly spending about $27,000 on the space we have. And, you know, that money we would have available. We so would have to use some mothball money in East Wavy, but we would have that money available so that we could move forward. But that, but the, the exact sort of uncertain and sort of conjectural nature of his hypothesis is, is yeah. exactly what I'm talking about that for us to really I'm crunch the numbers and find out exactly what we're talking about is a large amount of work a, a very disruptive thing to the staff and we don't like that's that's 
to do that and then not have this, that would be a real right. travesty. But again, to, to make a final determination, we, we would need those numbers. I mean, there's got to be a little bit of good faith here that, yes, we are interested in the conversation. Where it goes, who knows? But, I, you know, I, I don't... Could you, you can, replicate the same thing that you did for scans? Oh, yeah. 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 That's what I said before. That's okay. that's how we would come up with those figures. Right. If I you just, could do that, that would... You know, we're, we're down a staffer right now. Right. I because Mary Ellen's doing two jobs. I do. I so... That. But yeah, you would replicate that, and then the numbers would be whatever. That would be at least something to show with the school committee. I, I well, think we, well, they're going to. You have a pretty good idea after Friday afternoon what's going yeah. on. What's right, but she's talking about. Let, let's assume for a second, Bob, that the RFP comes back. Well, they're not going to decide. No, but, but, but let, let's 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 for hypothetically. If we're pretty confident that Waitley might win the the bid, um, then we if we as a board said, yeah, let's try to figure out how to get how to get the, the committee into the or the union into the mill space, the numbers are gonna be pretty similar. I mean if the square footage is the square footage, those numbers are gonna be, you know, we came in at a figure about twenty thousand dollars a year. For scams, and if the square footage is comparable, no, yeah, but, but no I think there, utilities. there, there could With be no utilities, yeah. right? That's the because we don't, it's and the utilities all, are an unknown because we don't all, know what it's going to cost. All to, part twenty five grand, all twenty all plus, plus, right? Which is some well, of like it's uh, nine dollars, three thousand square foot, what right? It's going to be now. about nine, right? But I'm just saying it's twenty thousand without utilities. I understand, right? And they're after three thousand. That's fifteen thousand and another ten for utilities. Right. Right. So it's twenty five thousand quick numbers. And yeah, for us quick. every year annually, um, hundred thousand dollars is one percent of our budget and we shed blood on town meeting mm -hmm. floor for a, for one percent every well, year. Yeah. Everybody. I mean yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been to enough town yeah. meetings to know. So Mount okay. Mount. does that give you enough money? Yeah, that so can I contact Mary Ellen on Monday and say how did the RFP come out or yeah. and find out and then would you be able to get me something in the email in the next two weeks? Okay. Um, well, I, and think, then, I think we got a pretty good idea. That basically, if they're going to basically try to hold us to the same figure that send, skim the same format. Yeah. The same format. Well, no, I understand and, that. And that's fine. I think we can roll with that. We just think, need to know whether we're going to have to spend. Yeah. Well, tweak the formula a little bit more in our favor, just because we're nicer people. I, I think we have. <laughs> we're pretty nice. Well, we're, we need uh, to okay. send your district. Right. 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 We, we've got to look at the formula. Except for a few from Deerfield. I've heard that. If you're not a scam to people, I won't say anything. Uh, you've got okay. Conway revenue stream, so that's it. I guess we've got to look at the formula again and see what's included. I wouldn't get hung up on saying we're going to match the rent for both of you because because for your office we, you may be under our heating system and water system and where skims is not so you're going to have we're going to have a higher expense for using skims Everything so just you. because so we're nice doesn't right. count for anything no really? so i guess i would don't get hung up on the figure okay. that we give skims because it, it could be different who well, knows? Old three, who old two. Well, right. we don't right. know. We gotta look. Gotta look at that. Well, to see seems where all that can be figured who, out. Who knows? Yeah, maybe, maybe if out, maybe if this actually happened, the board members of Dedek would see the light, and you know, never mind. <laughs> no. I didn't say that, of course. Nothing we say. That, that you, um, you got my my uh, joking reference there. I missed it. It was it was, for, it was on purpose. Anyway, right. thank you for your time. We appreciate okay, thank it. You. And I'll give you a call on, on Monday. Good. All right, thanks. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your time. Excuse me. Okay, so make sure. All right. Finance committee to move up. Did you guys move up? Sorry, we're running a little okay. 10 minutes late, you guys. Well, it's only three of us. Where's your chair? <laughs> yeah, but you guys aren't. Oh, yeah. Is this a, you guys are just, what, are you, is this a formal meeting or? Self power panel. Yeah, in theory. It was supposed it's to be. Yeah. 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 Sure. All right, well, you guys can recommend and we can vote and you guys can obfuscate your. Yeah. We've never met as a body yet to, to recommend anything as a body. Oh, you're not? No. Uh, oh. So I can give you an opinion. 
of one person. I don't know if the other two in this committee have the same opinion. Yeah. Do you need one more for Corey? Yeah. Yeah. He said he would be, well, I wasn't expecting you to come. No, but Paul said he was going to be here. Yeah. And Dan said he was going to be here. Yeah. It, it is a pretty nice night. I know. Do you guys I'm surprised Tom's here, actually, from what I heard. Yeah. All right. What are, Jim, what are, your, what are your perceptions on this? Well, Robert Sorry, Dean. I survived. Robert Dean shed some light on, on some information I wasn't. I'm look at it. No, I got another one. Okay. Bob the heating season. So we have the choice between $1.2 million upfront lump sum payment or spreading the payment over 10 years for a total of uh, $1,655,833. Yeah. Uh, Robert Dean uh, and the 10 year payout shows that at the end of 10 years, We'll be, we will have paid 21000 in interest on the fire truck and another 247000 in interest on the building, total of 268000 that we could avoid if we paid those off in uh, year one. But offsetting that is the additional 455000 456000 in payments and revenue, spreading those payments annually over 10 years. So that's 188000 of additional revenue over and above the interest that we'd be paying on the fire truck and the building over that window of time. So we'd be leaving on the table, in my opinion, 188000 if we took the lump sum payment and paid the building and the fire truck off. If we exercise the discipline at, during this 10 year window to set aside the 692000 that we would still owe on the building, we could pay that building off at the end of 10 years save the 402,000 in interest for the balance of the 30 year mortgage. And we still have 963,000 left over for other town operations. And in my opinion, the 10 year payout is, is more appealing than the lump sum. Taking the 10 years, paying the mortgage off at the end of 10 years, that balance of 692,000. Mm -hmm. One, one question I have, and Mark's not here to answer the question, maybe Mary Ellen can, but I was under the impression that FHA was not going to let us pay this off, that we signed an agreement with them the for the loan on this building. No, no USDA they said they would. Oh, they but will. We oh, heard Mark has been saying contract that. Contract to pay it early. Yeah. I, I, I think they the uh, confusion there is if we paid it off, Principal in advance. Right. That kicked in something with USDA. No that shows them to be a cash. Now you have ability to pay over and above what the terms are, so go get a loan somewhere else. Okay. Don't recall the loan. All right. Okay. The other you have, that you have more of an ability to pay. Right. So you right. Right. We'd have to be smart about we that. We can consider a ten-year deal, though, is you're locked into tenants like you know the school or scouts. You know, should they? leave for some reason or scams is out of here in three to five years, then your ability to find other public entities, so to speak, to get in there is limited. And uh, yeah, they have to be public organizations to rent while we're under USDA law. Right. right. Okay. Yes, I don't follow your your uh, numbers, your logic of uh, you're saying taking the the ten year payout, is that assuming that you would not spend the money over 10 years and then pay off the building at, after year 10? Right. That we would take the money annually and over the 10 year period. And put it in a bank or whatever for Just set it. Set 692000 aside. If we wanted to spend anything above that, that would be the town's discretion. But set aside the 692000 which is the balance of the mortgage after that 10 year window. Yeah, pay that mortgage off, save the 402000 in additional interest on the balance of the 30-year mortgage. Yeah, that's another and option. We still have 963000 from the 1655. Yeah. Still have the 963000 available to use for town operations. That's another option that's not presented here. Yes. The, the, other, the other thing that, that comes to light here is the, the ability of American Tower to pay 
for the 10 years. Their bond rating has recently increased from like a C minus to whatever B grade is. And also their other rating has gone from a, what? It was a negative to a? Stanford. A, it, was, it was actually upgraded. Upgraded from a negative to a positive company. So they're not a, a AAA guaranteed uh, McDonald's Verizon company that's going to be around for years. No, but if they, let's say in five years, they stop paying, they're out of there. Right? But you only get five years of a But you've got your cell tower. Back. Right, and Dude. other suitors will be calling. That's right. Well, but nobody, nobody else applied for I mean, there's no, there's no guarantee in no. anything in life. You know but that. But nobody now. else has applied for it. Because they figure they got it locked. They figure this American no, tower's got it locked. If they go out, it's their tower. Their, their bond is to remove the tower. Yeah. We would just have the space. Or sell it to we don't get the tower. Else. If they went out of business. In the original um, proposal from American Tower, before the RFP went out, they had some kind of a five-year walk-away clause in that 10-year deal. Right. And I'm not sure if that is included in this new response to the RFP or not. That's not very It's not in the contract. Yeah. 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 Uh, but okay, the, the 165000 every year would go into what? Free cash? Where would that money well, be? Please. We're crazy We're, if we don't put it into stabilization. Yeah. Right? yeah. I, I think that's, you know, my theory think, is we're getting get 50,000 a year from them now, just ballpark number, yes. that we've been spending to balance our budget. Right. You continue to do that. What's gonna happen in 10 years when we're not getting that money? If they're giving us 160,000 a year, you, put, you still take 50 of it and use it for the budget. The other 110, I'll get a quorum. <laughs> you put it in stabilization or you Put some in free, a little bit in free cash every year to keep that. Has Tom going. brought up the speed on the con, con, uh, Deerfield Europe thing? Say again? Has Tom brought up the speed on Deerfield Europe? Uh, Deerfield Europe is changing their tax structure. So we will not get that 200 north of $200,000 a year. So we have the one year cushion that we banked originally. What was it? Changing Five years ago. Now. Yeah. So we're down 270. So, Jim, you're not going to bank anything. Could I ask you to go over your We're number? lose yes, the yes. numbers again because I was, I was trying to find them on the sheets here. So, and not here, so. in the 10 year payout section of the spreadsheet, yeah. the second um, section? Yeah, on the top of the 10 year payout, okay. Uh, you'll see that the far right total paid fire truck principal 395000 Okay. fire truck interest 21000 okay office building principal and interest. So okay. principal or interest on the fire truck of 21 and on the building of 247 is the total interest over that 10 year window of 268,000. So that's additional costs that we could avoid if we paid the fire truck and the building off in year one. Right. But we would lose the opportunity for the 456,000 if we took 10 annual payments of 165,000 <coughs> A year. Where does the 456? That's come? the difference between the 1.2 and the 1.6. One, yeah, difference between 1.2 and the 1.655. Well, you got to subtract the 260 from the 460. So the difference between 1.2 and 1,655,883 is 456,000 additional revenue that would be received by taking 10 annual payments right. versus Good. taking a lump sum of 1.2 million up front. Okay, but you're still going to have. A million ninety-four left to pay on the two debts. No, you have six hundred ninety-two left to pay. Four hundred and two of that is interest that we wouldn't have to pay if we paid off the debt at the end of year ten. Right, because your debt service is going to the cumulative debt service will be reduced by a fraction. So you're assuming you're putting so, the money away. I am. Yeah. Yeah. That's a huge. That's, it's that's, a huge that's assumption. That's a discipline that has to be exercised. Yeah. No, uh, we, uh, yeah, I hear you. Uh, I just it's not going to work if we don't do that. I agree. I, and thus, I don't think it's going to work. 
That's well, the, the challenge that I have with, and I think I said this last time, with taking the money up front and paying off the building is my concern over losing $270,000 in revenue uh, from whatever bears call them. Um, and that's gonna hurt. Spreading this out softens that hurt a little bit. But that that's going to. But it doesn't. It doesn't allow his scenario to play out. A little, a little bit, but not uh, entirely. There's a little bit. There's a little bit. One sixty versus two seventy. Those are the numbers. We're down two seventy a year. You're right. Saying, but that's going to happen regardless. I that, understand. Yeah. But it doesn't us. We don't. It don't, 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 don't I understand that. I, I totally understand that. So so it lessens the hurt. hurt. It lessens the hurt. Yeah. No, it's exactly, not but it eliminates, it's not enough. It eliminates his I'm scenario. Saying, saying. His scenario is gone. There's no 700,000 at the end of 10 years because we've just less than just eaten it up. Hurt. <clears throat> okay, but that's okay. If you put it in a, a stabilization account, are you assuming after year 10 you would pay off the, the mortgage? The mortgage is 692,000. And save the 401,000. It's and can we left. set up a, a stabilization account for that specific purpose? Yeah. It has to be approved at a town meeting. It has to be approved at a town meeting to set that up. Right. Yeah. But Jim, your scenario, I just want to make sure that we're on the same page. Your scenario did offer some general ops support, didn't it? Or, or, yeah, of the million six fifty five over that ten year window, only six hundred ninety two of it would be used to pay off the mortgage. Would be so used to pay off the mortgage and the, and the truck. Well, the truck would have been paid off. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. right. Yeah. So then you would have. So there's nine hundred sixty some thousand left over out of the one six five five for operations. It's just that in year one through, you know, whatever ten. We run, we run short because of the shortfall by... Right, so it, so it does soften the blow a, a little bit. And, and it's, gonna, it's gonna be a blow. Well, the other option you had was paying the building, not paying the fire truck. Right. That gives you three years for us to figure out something else. It'll be 2020. We'll be looking at what's next. Mm -hmm. If what's we take the 400,000, that we don't pay on the truck, mm -hmm. and the 220 that we have in the bank, 2017, 2018, 2018, 2019, 2020. You boys may not even be here. <laughs> I guess you will. You'll be the only one here. But yeah. we don't have an yeah. option to not pay for the truck, right? Oh, we have an option to, to not pay for the truck. Yeah, we have to pay for the truck. Over five years. Right. Yeah, but you don't have versus to. year one. Correct. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, just let it run its current two point. What's the total interest that is paid on that property? Twenty one. Twenty one thousand. Twenty one thousand. Right, so See, my assumption is that we would pay it right over five years. That, that's the one that's scenario. Twenty one thousand. The gentleman just... didn't put out was to leave the truck, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. pay the building. Okay. The other option, if you take the lump lump sum and put it in stabilization for ten years, they show an interest rate of what one percent. Is that is that reasonable to get? I don't think so. Probably. I don't know if you could get that. I don't get that. Get that. You must well, dig a I, hole out back here and bury it. You know, I think they have, have to give you something. I don't think they can leave it in there without any interest at all. Um, even even in accounts that are non-bearing, yeah. they still earn. There's something. There's something there. But wouldn't it be close to a half percent? Oh, wouldn't, like wouldn't, be, I mean, wouldn't be. Wouldn't be. Wouldn't be much at all. Way one percent of a million isn't. Well, they got isn't much money. Yeah, no. twelve thousand a year here. Interest. Not when we're not with the budgets we're talking about. No, but that adds up to the one point three two five total versus the uh, lump sum of one six four five. So again, that's and, just my scenario. Yeah. And if you... You know, I... You have more options, it seems, with the... If you took the, the lump sum and put it in a stabilization account for 10 years, I mean, 
guess you're not guaranteeing, well, I guess you could set up to pay off the, the debt on the building, but there could be something else come up within the that you'd have to use the money. Ten year period that you wanted to use the money for. Right. right. And you, may, you, you know, we all have to remember that one person's pork is another person's prime rib. That's right. And yeah. there are going to be different factions in town that say, I, this is a crisis. Oh, yeah. And then somebody else is going to have a different crisis. And then there's going to be a war. Mm -hmm. but you, you, well, either option, if you set it up in a stabilization account, you're, you're always going to have that. Oh, yeah. It's just less money to, to fight over. That's, yeah, less money yeah. to fight over. But you guys are going to deal with that every time. Then. I, don't, I don't think just put it in a stabilization is an option. Well, we would deal with it. It's not going to fix it. You know, my, my uh, concern with, with just paying off the, the building, and, and, I, and I get the feeling, and guys, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't want to speak for you guys, but because we would have more options for leasing this space right. to a private entity. That's, right. that's mm -hmm. not why I... Okay, well, that's, that's one of the, one of, one of the I, scenarios that I've heard. I want to say $648,000. That's my only priority. priority. Right. And, and I'm, you know, some of you guys have lived in town longer than me, and some haven't. But in the 35 years my family's been in town, it's not like there's a whole lot of economic development going on, and people are not banging down the doors to rent space in Whitley. I wish they were. I wish we had a couple more of these industrial parks that we could bring in some jobs, and but it's just not happening. So I, I, I don't want us to make a decision solely based upon the what if scenario of other tenants that might be plausible if we had a little bit more flexibility because we were out from underneath the... I agree with you, okay. But if we're going to agree on that, then we also have to agree on the fact that we can't look forward not only to or anticipate in the future. If we can't anticipate that we have we can build a rev revenue stream with this building, we also cannot anticipate that we're going to have outlandish spending at some point in time in the future. If we're going to take the future out, we're going to take the future out. Right. So, yeah, so we kind of have to look at it for the here and now. If, if, if we were a, a profit organization, a for-profit organization, I'd say, well, you take the money, present value, 1.2, you invest it interest-bearing, or you invest it in whatever funds that could get you a return on investment, but we can't do that. And we're not going to get anything by investing, you know, so it seems like just on that logic alone, it makes sense to take the money and run, the lump sum. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think that we should, this should factor into or, or make a difference on who and what we rent the space to here. I think no. that's, that's separate. Oh, uh, sure. Whatever we decide, we still need a, a, a rent figure for them and whatever we decide to include as a portion of a mortgage or a value of the building, uh, we should still do that. Just because we don't have a mortgage on here doesn't mean the rent goes in half because uh, we're not paying. I don't think anybody's proposing uh, that. No. John, what were you going to say? Yeah, the other scenario, I guess, or way to look at it is if you take the lump sum, pay off this building and, <clears throat> and get out from underneath a, a 40 year commitment, and have this equity in the building, and then five years, eight years, ten years down the road, some big project comes along, refinance and get a loan on it. And then you're, it could be for a shorter term, probably interest rates, probably not a lot of difference, who knows what's going to happen, but, you know, at least you're saving money in the meantime, and then you have the option of doing that at some point in the future. Just like refinancing your house. Right, you are saving money uh, in the interest. I think if we're willing to tie our hands, which I don't know that we are, as to what we do with this space going forward, and keeping that loan in force does tie our hands somewhat. But um, but I I agree with Paul. We need to. I think we need to take the lump sum. 
going for the 10 years and then paying it off is an option as well, uh, where we'll, we'll be able to save some interest, um, more interest. But the, the thing is, we're, we're going to tie our hands a little bit. And, uh, and we're going to have the asset. If we pay it off, the asset will be ours at the end of the time. I, I, when we get the lump sum, and then like um, John says, we can uh, go forward and, and deal with whatever we need to do in the future. We need to take a, a equity loan. Because if you get into that situation where you have the 40-year loan on this building, and the town's ability to pay, that obviously USDA would look at if we started prepaying, and then say we needed for some reason another $500,000 loan, our ability to go out and get another loan, I think, is limited too. But the other option you know, take the lump sum is to just pay back the debt on this building and not the fire truck because it's only what twenty-one thousand. That would give us the what four hundred thousand cushion, to, cushion to, to for the four or five years to make up the loss in in Covestro and the tower lease. Uh, if we want to use that money in the budget or, again, designate that in some kind of stabilization account. I, I, I keep thinking we are, I, I know at some level we're leaving money on the table by not taking the 10 years. Sure. We, we start. Yes, yeah. you are. But There's no question that we're going to do that. Um, and and, and why, why shouldn't we maximize the net? Because... Well, there, there, there may not be a, a good lo logical answer to that, but if we do take the lump sum and own the building outright, we will have done something very constructive with that revenue pie. Versus, I know we want to, you know, I said take the future off the table, but if we do take that 10 year, the future is absolutely unknown and as to what pulls on that money. Right. Yeah, but you know, there's no guarantee on the 10 either. No, well, there is no guarantee on that 10. Now, I know they're a big company. They no. just came out of a C triple minus to a B triple minus. But you know, oh, that's the, not good. My, no, well, that's what we're trying to say. I keep that's going back good. to the. But you know, the other thing we have to remember is we made the decision as a town to purchase this building as our town offices. We did so understanding what the costs of this building would be to maintain the building, pay off the, you know, the, 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 the debt service and the principal and, and all that stuff. We didn't purchase this building. We would have purchased this building regardless of whether there was a revenue stream coming in or not. Correct. It was never, mm -hmm. no matter what everybody never, tells you, it was never not, considered it was any not other purchased as, right. as a revenue stream. Exactly. Right. And, and it certainly wasn't purchased with the knowledge that we were going to pay it off lump sum. No, no but if we, had we had 800000 in the bank, we probably would have bought it lump sum. Yeah. I don't, maybe. No. It, was, it would have been a scenario. $648,000. That's the number. That's a lot of interest. Yeah, yeah but, 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 but again, so but if you're using that, that number. That's your kids, that's almost maybe your grandkids, you know, you're obligating them of it. Right, but using that, using that same logic, we're leaving that close to that same amount on the table. No. But you're, you're kind of, like Paul is saying, you're, you're speculating into the future. What's, what's going to be here, whether they're going to pay or not, what other expenses are going to come up to use that money. We know today, We've got this debt. We've got a source of funds to pay that off. That we should do that today. Whatever the future holds for us, none of us in this room know. That could change. Two or three years from now, we could be facing something other, other crisis. But at least we've accomplished something with that money today. I'm just something that just came to my mind is you're talking about losing two hundred and seventy thousand dollars from over there. Now we're going to lose fifty thousand dollars worth of income from the south tower. That's three hundred and twenty thousand dollars. No, it's two seventy. Two twenty. Two twenty. Two twenty. Still, still, still. That's two hundred and seventy thousand yeah. dollars that we're not going to be have. We're not going to have. 
That's right. correct. We're going to beat you. Exactly. And by the way, we all agree uh, the that the last shit is going to hit the fan <laughs> here. Our two committees are going to be regularly That's starting right. with the ball, right? Tom, and those are going to be fun. Tom is new to this. You, you haven't followed the whole picture. Well, we put 220000 in the first year. Yeah, I know we did. And we haven't. So 2018, we paid the two, we pulled the 220. Yeah. Then we're going to not finance, we're not going to pay the fire truck. That gives us 200000 for two years out of the 1.2 million. Yeah, so it's 2020 before you guys even discuss it. Believe me, it's going to be, I don't, don't tell me. I'm just telling you the numbers. I'm not, I didn't mean anything about discussion. I'm just telling okay, you the I'm numbers. Not say it, 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 when we, when, when we finally have to come to Jesus moment, it's not going to be a fun moment. Nope. But, and, and again, uh, it's three years out. Uh, I, I, I personally think you guys won't even blink. Yeah. Three years well, out. At 220000 dollars I'm telling you, you won't even see it. By, in three years, by the time we get there, we'll have had either new growth, we'll have, the school may have closed by then. We may not even have a regional, we may not have school. Other revenue from this Other building. revenues from this building. Yeah. <laughs> you're painting an awful rosy picture. We're the trap that the federal government falls into every day. I did a lot of work on the federal budget for years and years and years, and the rosy economic scenarios are just, I hear you know, and I'm not playing politics here, but one of the reasons that Ronald Reagan was so popular is because he cut taxes at the same time he increased spending. Right. Yep. Well, what's not to love about that? That's right. And that's, my fear is that that's what we are, we're making a deal with the devil. I say we call the question and Paul, 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 I, now, keep on going. Fortunately, it's not time me to. No, I, no, I, I think the first, I agree with, with you, Dan, the first, Concern is that a resolution or, or a recommendation for the finance committee. Paul, are you ready to make a recommendation for your committee? Let's just look at the committee. From the finance committee, we have to recommend to the board so right. and to the town what our direction in terms of a recommendation would be. So, um, do we have a motion on the floor for the finance committee? Tom, you know what? To, you don't know I, it. Okay. You know, I'll, 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 go ahead. Motion. Okay. That we consider recommending to the selectmen um, the proposal that we take the um, full payout up front. That we pay off the mortgage of this building with it, and we not pay off the truck. Um, we pay that off in five, you know, one, for five years <clears throat> in order to have money left over to cover the uh, loss of taxes. Cover the debt. Do I have a second on that? <laughs> no. <laughs> I would second it. I can second that. But now we have, we now have to come to a vote. Now have to, we come to a vote. All those in favor of that scenario, raise your hand. All right, we're right back. <laughs> right but back. you know what? We it was fun. It was, it was good theater. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean to make light well, of this. I just, I I just have to bring some order to a little bit of chaos. There's a little bit of chaos here. You know what? Bring in four. You know what we, we really need? We, we, I really need a board with all of these things, and so we can look and. I don't need a power. Present. PowerPoint. That's what John, John, had, a, John had a question. Kind of. And those numbers that you were looking at before on the 1.6 was the fact that we're saving $36,000 a year by paying this off, that we're not paying for principal and interest accounted in there? They just do the interest. They're just, just looking at the interest. just considered the interest? Well, it's still a payment that you're making that you want right. to pay. Principal should be included we'd be, in that. We'd be paying the principal and interest for the first 10 years. Right. The building. Beyond the 10th year, we would be paying nothing because my assumption is, or, or scenario is, we'd pay the building off 692000 in year 10, or after year 10. Beyond that, we'd have, have no payments. During the 10 years, we're saving $360,000 in payments. No, so we'd, still, we'd still be paying principal and interest on the well, building in that first 10 years. Yes, we paid it off. Um, 
So I think it's a cash, you're, you're saying, John, from a cash standpoint, well, that's not cash availability. Yeah, yeah I, I was just talking about just interest. Talking interest. What we'd be saving in interest. We still pay the, the principal out of tax money. Right. So it's really 360000 Yeah. For 10 years. Just, just makes sense to me to have more options and equity that you can deal with in the future than be committed to a 40-year term. I mean, think about it. Would you do that as your homeowner? Would you mortgage your house for 40 years and not know what's going to happen 10 years down the road? If you had the ability to pay it. Yeah, yeah. Or refinance. Well, again, but as a homeowner, it's opportunity cost. It's your, you know, you might. What else can I do with that ability to pay off? And that's so, exactly what we do here. Right, I know. So, Paul, what, what else do you need? What other information do you need to make a decision? Well, I want to hear again, Jim. <clears throat> would you explain your preference? Well, my only concern is one that I think Fred brought up about the uh, credit rating of. Mm -hmm. Of the American Tower. American Tower. You know, if, if we're stiffed somewhere during that 10-year right. period, right. we're stiffed. So yeah. It sounds like we don't have the tower. We don't have the balance of the money that's due right. us. Right. Uh, there's no guarantee. So that's where I'm softening my position if their credit rating is less than stellar. And if, and and if someone team. comes up with the technology in the next three years yeah. that makes cell towers obsolete, That's they definitely. put a satellite in space satellite. that everybody can use their cell phone on. Or drones or whatever. <laughs> whatever. Right. And that's all. The and, and that's true. I mean, that's why we went through this process to begin with, because you don't know what technology is going to happen. Rumor has it, technology gets better. Doubles every six months, right. according to the so, computer guys. But I, I'm not convinced that. I want. I would like. I would prefer, and we may not have the time to see the language on what happens to that tower. Because if they go belly up, they go into bankruptcy, and then we get in line with everybody else. Yep. Right. Yep. Yeah. And you don't get uh, and, and well, right. But but well, we may in fact own that tower at the end of bankruptcy. We may. We may not. But we may. We may be using satellite. So what's your preference? How long is the bankruptcy going to take? You know. I am, would like to see it drawn out over the 10 years, but realistically, I think we're going to be better off taking it up front. All right. So we, so we got three. So <laughs> three and a half. No, I think, I think you I'm, got I'm softening my position on this because of the credit rating of the American Tower. I mean, that's well, what, we but they have been around for a long time. Well, I think I've always been around for a long time. Companies that come in and buy oh. out big companies. There's not many companies bigger than American Tower. In that, in that in, world. In that world. Well, yeah. well, All right. Well, China money coming in, you don't know. I mean, it just, it's my just... Only, my biggest fear is that if we take it all at once, no matter what we do with it, in short order... It's going to be gone. It's yeah. going to be gone. Well, because we, but we do something right with it. We have to make sure it gets into so you guys uh, an account specified <laughs> for... Right. Yes, sir. Yeah, right. but you still do whatever you want. We, also we do not. We listen to our finance committee. The money most won't the won't be available yeah. for. Well, if you look at that warrants, most of the time we agree, except for that one. 2019. 20, it'll hit free cash in 2018. Really? Yeah, Fall of 2018, the money will become available. Right. Not until then. Right. Because it's not going to hit free cash until the end of next year. So we're looking. It'll have to get through 17 because at this point, I don't think this is going to close. No. By the end of June. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's a year and a half out before we see the right. Okay. I'll make a motion that we take the lump sum payment and pay off the debt on, on this building, town office building, and put the other remaining amount into a stabilization fund for capital projects. Oh, no. Oh, right. I, I mean, no, that's just the stabilization agenda. Just stabilization. Fine. Stabilization. Not, not, don't tie it to capital. Okay, well, I didn't know exact wording whether you wanted to tie it to something or not, but okay. Take a lump sum, pay off the debt here, and put the 400000 in a stabilization fund. Well, based on the advice of our finance committee, uh, that seems to be the measure most preferred, even though it was two to two. 
then change four to four. Or three and a half. Three and a half. <laughs> I think it's four. two and a half to one. No, he's coming around now. Now right. it's four. I think, I think because, because of the yeah. yeah. I mean the credit rating. rating. I mean, American you know, you just that, think that concerns me. If you went to an investor, you know, someone that, that was investing your money, they wouldn't invest it in a company with a rating like that. I mean, unless if they had well, their choice, it just got upgraded anywhere else. I mean, it just got upgraded. Yeah. Let's not say right. That's that choice. We don't. We're not. We're, we're, we're not staring at pores here. No. So okay. We'll so let's second. not get to waiting on a second. I made a motion. We have a second. So I support your motion. Okay. So John four Tucker. Four. I I I'm I'm in these guys' camp. I, I, their former camp. I, I, I this is I, John. Basically, what you're saying is you're guaranteeing us it'll pay in ten years. You, you, that's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You're saying you're going to put your house up. You'd put your you're so sure of it. That the that the that Waitley will get all that money in ten years. You're so sure of it, you'll put your house on the line for it. Now I know you wouldn't, but that's kind of like what you're but, saying. I I, th I think it is a very safe. I, I just do, and and no one can tell tell me that the company's going to go belly up in five years. Just like I can't tell no, you it's not. No, it's true. So it, it, the, the conjecture. We're, none of again, none of us are, mm -hmm. you know, PhD PhD economists in this stuff. So. The question is, do you want to bet on a sure thing? Right. Yeah. Or how much Keep risk it. do you want to expose Take the town to over. by voting on this other? And I don't think you're exposed. But it's a degree right. of risk. Right. Well, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a Tom feels the same way you do, I think. Well, Tom, actually, that's not your problem. Your problem is. If we country. take it all at once, we're going to eat it all at one meal. Yeah. And that, we're going to eat well, all the then dessert. It's going yeah. your, for the debt. Your. A better way past to ability money. to manage money. The town's past ability to manage money is awful. That's okay, right. but, but you, you're, you, if we have money, we spend it. That's if we're right. going to have four hundred and whatever thousand going into stabilization. It will get spent on, you know, we're going to need something. Well, it's going to be how it fits into the budget where you're losing it. That's, that's what, what I'm saying is in, so you in two or three years, but I guarantee well, someone, there, someone will say, someone, I, I guarantee it that someone's going to say, you now have in excess of $700,000 in stabilization. Yep. What are you guys sitting on? You know, we're going to tie the two water systems together. Right, they're going to buy another dump truck. And, 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 and I don't want to do whatever. Well, place a value judgment on the good, the bad, or the ugly. It's got to be a... You, but, but you're going to have that come up for 10 years because people are going to see that money in there and say, well, why can't we use it? This yeah, way, in, we're, we're using it today. We have a need. In, in we know year, what we're going to do with it. In year three, we've got a deficit of $270,000. Yeah. Well, year four. The, the ball is okay, saying you, you can't predict You get my point. It's more than half of the 10 years. You can't predict yeah, but it is. But, it, but damn, that's true. Uh, can, we, can we pull a second? Or? Yeah, I'll second. Okay. Ever vote? No. Well, I get. I think I get to vote. He's, he's the chair. You want to call? Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to take my time. Well. Uh, hey, I'm going to look at the business. I'm going to look at the business. This is what deliberation is all about, in all honesty. Okay. True. Right? Been deliberating enough. So further discussion, uh, Tommy's point is well founded, of course, and we're going to take, if we take the money in lump sum, we're going to spend it right away. Right? This, right. There's right. nothing wrong with that. I don't think so either. If we spend it wisely, we spend it on, so we, we eliminate no. debt and moving forward. And if, we reduce our exposure to risk. Exactly. We're we're change, we're moving one asset, which is the ownership of that cell tower, to another asset. You don't want to take. That's why I didn't agree with the stabilization. That that's moving an asset to cash, and you don't want to do that. You want to keep your assets intact. Well, you can. Can, it's can another you, reason. Can you make the, Can I amend the motion to, to say we're using it to pay off the debt on this building rather than a stabilization? 
Well, that's what we, we said. That. That's what we did. That's what we did. That was what he originally said. I thought the excess, the excess was the goal. Excess. Okay. The excess. Okay. I mean, it has the to be the excess. Okay. The excess. Okay. It has to be. Fine. Call the vote. Well, you're, you're you call. Here. You call the that's what I'm doing. I'm calling the vote. Okay. Okay. Can I say I'm Paul, saying. all those in favor. I'm sorry. Fine. All those opposed. I get to call that. Yeah, well, call it. <laughs> you got to raise your hand. I didn't say I was opposed. Oh, you're abstaining? Probably. <laughs> so, yeah. Put so, your so two in favor and one abstention? Yeah. I'm sorry. Was that a yes? Yeah. Okay. If there were two abstentions and one in favor, would that carry the day? No. Yeah. No. It wouldn't matter. We didn't carry the be a majority, right? I wanted to sign in a couple weeks what my vote is, so that's what I'm holding up. <laughs> All right, we're done. You guys, 25 of 9. Let's move on other business. And you guys, seriously, finance committee, thank you again because I really am enjoying this is two in a row. Yeah, which has been a good, a good discussion. We, we we acknowledge each other's positions, and we get and we, things done, and we listen to each other. We get things done, and we listen to each other. And we put the most pressure on the finance committee that, in my history, has ever seen. Coming out, they perform that. What did you say? More pressure. Most pressure. All right, but I, I think that just just as a comment moving forward, this scenario here that we have, I think, will help to Tommy's comment about how we how we basically spend what we have and if somebody wants something in town they get it i think this forum will help us reduce help both groups kind of push back a little bit and 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 make some order to it right. and, and well i, I wouldn't call it frivolous i would call it just make sure that it's thought through well i think communicating like this in the future as well as coordinating capital planning yeah. yeah, with right. this effort, right, will go a long way yeah. to reduce the risk of us spending more than we should be. And who's in charge I agree. of that? But the finance committee. Uh, yeah, I mean, all you do and is recommend. And you I don't. Right. The finance right. committee right. does not decide yeah. how the money. We we, we set the table, and you guys figure out how much of the table That's can right. be right. paid. Not not what parts of the table are bought, but what how much of the table is bought. But if we exercise control between these two boards exactly mm -hmm. I'm okay i'm gonna i'm gonna kill this conversation okay right. guys all right all right okay. old business town administrator search update okay we had 29 applications Yo. the search committee met this morning and recommended three forward so i have uh, resumes are in your packets yep. there um, I have two confirmed, uh, one at eight and one at nine on Friday, and I'm waiting to hear from the third candidate uh, to make sure they can come with that. Okay. 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 That was the best three out of 28. Actually, 28. One came in the oh, middle. Oh, that's right. Two, two yeah. oh, overall, was, Dan, was, your, your opinion. It was easily good crop, middling crop, or yeah. I know no, it's not a fair can, question. No, it's okay. We can we can train them. If, if the third one doesn't come for interview, does that exclude them from? I would think well, so. Well, yeah. well, I I I think I tried him right beforehand, so I think he just must be away. So I am anticipating I should hear from him. There's time. very little uh, municipal experience out there that will come in to work at this level. But you know, if they're young and they work hard. Well, it's a good the trade. education out there is immense. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Are like so we're meeting on Friday morning. Eight o'clock we start. Eight o'clock we start. They're all local. Did we get any from far and wide? Uh, Oregon, Texas, Nebraska. And they were limited because of qualifications or why? Um, Pretty much. Yeah. It wasn't because they were from far away. No. I mean, I Googled everybody, and some of them had some major issues. Okay. Okay. I trust you guys. All right. So Remember the, also that Mark didn't have any town administrator experience. No, but he did go to the Suffolk University and had graduated from their local management program. No, we don't need to go there. We right. But again, you have one candidate who, who has an MPA from UMass, yeah. which is what two of the three people at this table have. So. Right. No, as I said, yeah. education is good. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, sure. um, so the Sunday morning. Okay, janitorial services. I'm going to pass over that for now. We did get a quote from BKN, but I want to get a second quote from another service. Just BKN is the one that does Hurley here right. right now? Okay. Right. All right. Okay. Was it? A, uh, I want to ask. Never mind. Yeah. yeah, let's just hold off on okay. that. Okay. Updates? Um, updates. Mark did submit for the second payment for Mill River, so that is um, on schedule. There is a final meeting for MEMA to come out and meet a final site visit next okay. Wednesday, the 8th, and once they do the site visit and then they go through their process, uh, hopefully sometime in the future there will be a final payment um, out, but there's still a little money left, left in reserve that they're not going to pay on until they go through the process they need to go through. So, but for the most part, it's, um, it's pretty well done. Okay. How much money are we talking? It's I mean, just hundreds of dollars, yeah, thousands? It's a, it's, no, it's, it's about $30,000. Okay, because there's some concern about uh, restoring the area to its uh, before condition. Is that well, and an Mark, issue that's going to be discussed? Mark, Mark and uh, Nick from Interflu have looked on it and at it, and they, they, um, they don't see where the problem is. So, so the water commissioners are going to have to point out what the problem is. That they see, okay. Because there's some disagreement on the level of the problem. Right. And when does this have to be done back to me? Well, the, the meeting next Wednesday is strictly a MEMA site visit. Okay. And water commissioners will be there. I told Wayne about it. They're welcome to come. Okay. Okay. What else? Okay. Um, petty cash adjust adjustments, uh, when you guys voted uh, increase to the treasurer's petty cash, we kind of looked at everything, uh, the other accounts, and basically I just need your approval to decrease the select board petty cash to $50, increase the library to 125 officially establish uh, the assessors at 100 and eliminate the fire department petty cash of 150 so are you okay with All those that? departments are okay with that? Yes. Okay, fine. Fine. Okay. okay. Uh, Randy Sibley has resigned from SCAMS and just need to accept that resignation and consider his re uh, replacement. I move to accept. Yeah, we move to accept and we need to think on the appointment replacement. <clears throat> When's their next meeting? I don't know. Do you guys Third Thursday? So what? Do you guys know? Uh, yeah, third Thursday. Thursday. Third Thursday. What's but today? That's ne not necessarily no. standard, but I get that. Okay. I get that. <laughs> so you have another couple weeks that this is all right. Really coming in. All right. We'll think about the okay. replacement. Um, are, are we considering one of us on that? I think we should strongly consider one of us. Because the other two towns are set up that way. So. Yeah, and I don't think there's any question that Deerfield, when they reappoint, will. Follow that suit. So I think I think it should probably be one of the three of us. Um, so I put that on the meeting for the thirteenth. Yeah. Now speaking of skims, the the IRF, the proposal opening is right. Friday at two. Is anybody here planning being there? Any of us? I wasn't planning. I'm just going to email Doug for the results as soon as they're available. Who opens it? The, the board, select board, or the scams? Who the town goes administrator to? Deerfield? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because they're the ones. They're the first. And then it gets and then it gets blown over to um. I'm just checking my calendar. Here. Who? I guess I could be there. Uh, if we're done with the interviews here by then. Does he determine which one? Oh, we better be. Hmm? I'll be out of town, so. You're better town? So you're, you've got 11.30. I've got a hard stop for interview at 11.30, so. We should be okay. Yeah. Because we started at 8. I mean, if you want to be there, Fred, okay. you know, I, I don't think there's going to be anything scurrilous. Does the town administrator determine which ones go to? All of them go. All of them. All of them, All of them. Whether they qualify or not? Right. Okay. It's just, he just opens he them, them. time stamps them. Oh, I see. That kind he of stuff. should issue a summary of the results, so, for the public. Well, there's no point in going if we don't. Well, good. Are you going to just hear who else submitted? Well, where do we stand on? Oh, well, we'll talk about an executive session. Right. Right. Okay. Cost, All right. right. And the last extension, um, they initially were looking to be out of here by the 16th, but now it looks like it might be the 20th. So are you okay to extend their lease for another month? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just need to make well, that. June, you're, you're talking or July? Uh, June. June. Okay. Discover New England bike tour. There is a bike tour. Um, could be coming through this summer, Discover New England. I, they're small groups. Uh, Jim is aware of it, and I just wanted to make sure 
we were aware of it as well. Okay, we're aware. Okay. And that's it, so we can right. go into executive session. Do you have anything else? No. Okay, so no. I uh, move to Adjourn. Adjourn this meeting and go into executive session for MGL chapter MGL chapter 30A, section 21A, subsection 6, to consider the lease of real estate. Um, All right, boys. Don't forget to close the door. Nice. We will not return to session. And you're declaring that an open meeting would have a detrimental impact. I am declaring that an open meeting would have a detrimental impact on negotiation position with the public body. Okay, so we'll call vote. Paul? Yes. Fred? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. 